Every time I try to, every time I try to film, go get it. All right, <laughs> let's wait until the door closes. Yep. <laughs> so hi everyone. Um, I wanted to make a video about surgery today. Um, I put a video out there a while back talking about spaying and neutering and there were so many people that wrote me back about how the tips kind of helped them out with preparing for surgery and it's just something that in reality the majority of us are going to have to face with our animal. This is good for cats and dogs so let's just jump right into it. There's five different kind of points. They're all really quick and we'll just kind of go right through this. So, I've got my notes right down here, just to help me kind of remember. Um, and basically, the first tip that I want to give you guys is that you want to restrict movement. Your vet is going to tell you about this. Um, basically, keeping your dog on one floor of your house, the main floor of your house, if you're in an apartment, using an elevator to bring your dog down to the main floor. You don't want to have any access to stairs, anything that could rip sutures out. So that includes possibly getting baby gates, kind of getting them all set up where your stairs start and making sure that your dog isn't going to be running up and down the stairs probably for, for the first week at least after surgery. So restrict your dog's movement. That also includes um, things like beds or where they're going to sleep. Some dogs like to jump up on their um, owner's bed and sleep with them and that's not a good idea to have your dog jumping up onto things. So definitely what is recommended is a smaller bed that's closer down to the ground. It doesn't require them to lift up their legs as much so it's going to be much more comfortable for them to get into especially for those first few days. So, now that we've talked about restricting movement, we're gonna talk about food. Now, when your dog comes out of surgery, they've been under anesthetic, and that makes you feel very wonky. So, um, most dogs have an issue with nausea after being under anesthetic. So, usually what's recommended is to feed in increments. And if your dog just eats straight dog food, that's great. You want to avoid feeding them large quantities of dog food. After surgery, you just really want to give them small amounts over a longer period of time. So split up what you would normally give your dog into probably five to seven feeds. Feed them in increments like that throughout the day. Uh, once the anesthesia wears off and the liver kind of processes everything that's in the body, um, your dog should pretty much return back to normal and you don't have to do that anymore. Um, it's the same thing with a cat. Cats can get very nauseous after surgery. Feeding in small quantities works well. Um, normally what's recommended for dogs especially and what is easy on their stomach is um, plain white rice with uh, ground beef that has the fat drained off. That's so easy on a dog's stomach. Um, that's definitely what I've had to do with my dog. Um, for those of you that have dogs that refuse to just eat dog food, <laughs> that's definitely a good option. So doing that for the first day, first 24 hours after they come out of surgery is a really good thing. The next thing you want to do, so we've talked about restricting movement and food. Next one is comfort. So you really want to keep the days after surgery, especially the first week I would say, after surgery, free from anything that's stressful. So there's a hormone in both our body and our dog's body and our cat's body called cortisol. And cortisol is a stress hormone and basically it's released whenever an animal is stressed out. It has a negative effect on healing. So you really wanna make sure that your dog is comfortable. 
don't have visitors over that may increase stress in your animals, just keep your house as quiet as possible for those first seven days. It's gonna basically give them the most optimal environment to heal. So the next thing that you wanna be doing is restricting their access to the incision. And of course, you know, cats and dogs are gonna want to figure out what in the world happened to them. Um, it's something that's hurting and they wanna probably check out the area. There's a difference when it comes to whether a dog's gonna lick or not. Um, not every single dog is prone to licking um, that area, so you really, you want to start out with a cone, but if your animal seems trustworthy with the incision site, you can start to wean them off of the cone if they're not licking. But if you have a dog that is kind of incessantly going at their incision site, you're gonna have to have the cone on for a very, very long time, probably for like two weeks. Um, but just making sure that they're not getting at that incision site, whether that be watching them very carefully, making sure that you're at home that entire time, or the cone, unfortunately. And there's different options for that cone. I will link the um, kind of talk that I did about spaying and neutering, and I go over all of the different kinds of cones, soft cones, hard cones, all of that kind of stuff. So, now that we've done four of the topics, let's go to topic number five. Number five is just knowing what to watch for. You basically want to be able to see whether or not the incision is infected. And that includes watching for redness, for swelling, and for any type of fluid leakage. Those are kind of the three main things. Um, so there's always going to be a little bit of redness around an incision site, but excessive redness is not normal. Any type of large swelling around the incision site is not normal. And any fluid leaking out, blood leaking out, um, plasma leaking out, clear fluid substances leaking out, that's not normal. So watch for those and you should be fine. So we've gone over all of those different things very quickly five different things that you want to watch for is restricting movement, restricting their access to their incision site, uh, comfort is key, different types of feeding schedules for when they're recovering, and also just knowing to watch for infection. Um, those are the five things that are gonna help your dog or your cat recover a lot quicker. So. I hope that that has helped. Um, I hope that any animal that's out there that is having to recover has a very um, speedy recovery. I hope that this has given you some things to think about um, that you may not have known. Yeah, so I will see you guys very soon in another video. I hope you guys have a really great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.